630 bodyweight squats and I'm dead. This time around, I decided to go opposite to what I've been doing recently with the 35, 30 down sets or whatever, whatever you want to call them. I started to uh, go from the bottom. So I would do a set of one, set of two, set of three, four, five, six, all the way to, up to 35 today I did. Um, the first 15 I did back to back. So, you know, do a set of one, pause at the top for a second, do a set of two, pause for a couple of seconds, do a set of three and so on and so on. And then after 15 sets, I ended up doing a bunch of threes um, until I got to about 30, 31. Then I started doing singles. Freaking spent, man, spent. Yesterday I did a thousand push-ups and I don't feel anything from it. Uh, maybe the slightest chest doms, not even a factor. But doing 600 odd uh, bodyweight squats freaking ends me, man. I was sweating like a dog in the house. I was walking around, you know, trying to find a cooler room. <laughs> um, proper, proper hard work. Uh, went over to the barbell straight after the, you know, the 35. So I did 34 all the way in the house. Uh, you guys are seeing 35 and then I went straight to the bar and I thought my god if I get three plates today I'm gonna be really really good I ended up getting one 180 so I got 180 after doing 630 bodyweight squats so this makes me think about the last time I did lots and lots of squats like three days ago whatever it was and I could only manage 140 and I only managed 140 a few days in a row so it's not the actual squats, the bodyweight squats that are making me feel weak with the top end sets, um, with the barbell squats. What was making me really, really weak last time was the fact that a few days before that I did the sit-ups. So the sit-ups basically wipe out four or five days worth of strength. I can't practice my sport because of the sit-ups, because of the amount of sit-ups that I did. But it seems as though these bodyweight squats that I'm doing are not affecting the top end strength. Which is interesting, right? I've mentioned this in a, you know, a video last week or in the last seven days. The fact that you can pump your quads up as maximally as possible. Like my quads are pumped. Quads are jacked right now, man. Um, yet when I go to my barbell lift, it's not really affected. So a few thoughts come to mind. Number one is that I'm not really using my quads that much when I'm squatting, which is bizarre. But it could also be a, a, a true, uh, truthful thing. You know, there's many ways we can squat. I know it seems like crazy to think that way. How the hell do you not use your legs when you squat? But simply shifting the bar a little bit towards the toes, so it's not mid-foot, a little bit, a, a bit more forward, automatically makes their lift a little bit more posterior chain. More hamstrings, more glutes, more lower back, more posterior chain simply. So... Simply by doing that, I'll go back to where I'm comfortable. It's basically like a deadlift type of motion. Even though I feel more upright in recent times, I can really gauge on those glutes, on those adductors, on those hamstrings when I'm squatting. It's something that I'm not 100% sure. I'm just trying to find what the hell is going on, man. How can somebody do 630 squats and then go and hit 180? Um, for a very long time now, I've, I've always felt that doing lots and lots of reps does something to my body. Maybe it puts me up in a, in, a, in a status where I feel healthy, I feel really, really warmed up, and I can give all my might into the bar. A lot of the times that I used to squat, man, I'd come in and 160 feels yucky, 180 feels disgusting. And when I think back, man, a lot of these sessions were not properly warmed up. So even though I'm removing strength, potential strength, uh, from the system because I'm doing all these reps in a way I'm also really really warming it up maybe potentiating the, the central nervous system to give more into those muscles because I'm warmed up so it's kind of like a balancing act you know there's optimal warm-up and then there's stupid 600 old squats so that's one thing that I'm that I'm that I'm thinking about that simply it's you know I'm not using a lot of quads and the other thing is, maybe it's just really, really, really warming me up and potentiating the central nervous system. Um, but then, why do uh, sit-ups really tax me? Well, sit-ups, I think, for somebody that squats like me and relies a lot on the posterior chain, if you get rid of your hip flexes, which is what sit-ups do, really, you know, they target a little bit of the core as well, obviously, but it's mostly a hip flexion exercise, you know, 
iliacus, psoas, rectus femoris. If you completely tax the living hell out of those muscles, then you got nothing. You literally have no foundation for for anything, and then you end up being like trying to leg press the thing without having a core. It's it's impossible to do. So this is why I've been thinking the core is is nobody likes to train it. Well, the majority of people don't like to train it because of these things, right? You, know, you you feel shit after. You know, it's hard to live because everything you just feel wasted, man. Like the central nervous system is fatigued. You can't lift with a barbell anymore because you're the effects of having a fatigued core are, are many. Like you can't do anything basically. So I'm gonna have to do some sort of core work. Definitely, definitely more frequency and definitely a lot less volume. Uh, but then it starts to kind of be, you know, a case of you need enough stimulus because this is the thing. Like when you're when you're training with the barbell, right? Like you know you're working up to a single 180. That's a lot of stimulus. You're working with a heavy ass weight. But when you're doing bodybuilding parameters, when you're doing a set of 30, you basically need to hit it hard, you know, provide that stimulus and then rest. Uh, doing a set of, you know, sets of five, five, five sets of 30 every day is probably not doable. So you need to make a disruption and then allow a rest. But when you make the disruption with the core, you're pretty much screwed. Like everything else gets affected. So this is where it's, it's, it's a tricky, tricky thing. And this is why I think, you know, high frequency deadlifting is also really detrimental to the whole training program because it's the same thing, man. Once you tax the muscles which are involved in that, likely a lot of hip flexion uh, stabilization as well. So as iliacus, rectus femoris, everything's got to do with stabilizing the low back. That's your deadlift. Once you smash yourself with that, then really you have no recovery points left for anything else. So it's kind of like, see, you, you start to get a little bit uh, in trouble trying to work out, how, trying to balance everything out. But bodyweight squats, man, I don't know, man. You can hit that almost every other day, man, and hit it hard. I'm wasted right now, but I know tomorrow morning I'll wake up. Yeah, I'll have a little bit of domes, whatever, but I can squat. I could probably deadlift as well. You know, I hit 180 just then, straight off the freaking bat of doing 630. So this is this is this is where it's like you know you can do leg pressing you know, until the cows come home. You can do leg extensions, leg curls, blah blah blah. The moment you start hitting hip flexion, hip extension, you're screwed. Um, so everything got to do with the hip is fine. Everything got to do uh, is the tricky thing. Everything got to do with your 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 knees is fine. It seems, you know, knee extension, knee flexion, no problem. Knee uh, sorry, hip flexion, hip extension, trouble. For me, hip flexion is so weak that I, I get wiped out. So, I need to think about what I'm going to do. Um, right now, you know, I'm thinking about doing bodyweight squats every other day. Uh, at worst, every third day. I mean, this this is feeling really, really good now that I know it's not really, really that... Uh, troublesome for me to recover from no worries you know I can do that two times three times a week um, it's interesting isn't it core is is it's really really tricky really really tricky so I don't know man I'm, I'm so surprised that I was able to do 630 and then do a 180 that's really surprised me it made me straight away thinking about the last time I did this many squats and how pathetic I felt. And uh, at the time I was like, no, no, no. I think it's because I'm, I'm spent with the quads because I pushed the RPE. That was the thinking, you know, then I pushed the RPE hard here, man. I went reverse. I went sets of one, two, three, four, all the way up. So I was working really, really hard leading up to the barbell and yet I still performed really well. So this makes me think it was all about the core last time. The bloody core. The bloody core is something to to be really, really careful of. Um, I like, you know, when, when I think about my training, I like little, you know, nice little boxes. You know, I'd love to do, you know, push-ups twice a week, squats twice a week. I love to do, you know, uh, sit-ups twice a week, but it's not, it's not working. Some things have harder recovery points. And right now I'm putting sit-ups and deadlifts in the same box. There's no way in hell you can do 
a shit ton of deadlifts, whatever the case might be, man. Even if you take 50% of your one rep max and you end up doing 100 freaking reps, you know, five sets of 10, or you do 200 reps, 10 sets of 20, whatever, whatever you end up doing with the deadlifts, you're, you're spent. Even if it's light ass weight, man, you're going to be spent. It's something to do with the flexion of the pelvis and the extension of the pelvis. That taxes the hell out of the, the human anatomy and we get spent. But we can do bicep kills until the cows come home. We can do knee, knee exercises until the cows come home. We can do wrist exercises, neck exercises. Well, I don't know about neck exercises, but I'm imagining the small joints got nothing to do with the, with the spine integrity. Um, and you can't really load the freaking neck anyway that much. So it's a case of, it's about the hips. It's about the hips. You want to flex your hips, be careful. You want to extend your hips, be careful. Um, with the volume, that is. Very, very be careful. I think if you're doing deadlifts and squats, which are, once again, hip extension, hip flexion, all of that, for small amounts of volume, it's doable. But anytime you add volume, you're going to be spent. Um, which is interesting. I've never thought about sit-ups and deadlifts and squats in the same, uh, in the same basket, but that's... That's pretty much what's happening here. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, and I'm also speaking and I'm probably not making sense, but um, hopefully that made some sort of sense where my mind is. I appreciate all of you guys and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.